It's been eight months since I scooped this jar full of rainwater and sediment from the rainwater butts in my garden and made this little ecosphere. It's been sitting on my windowsill undisturbed and unopened all that time. So let's check in today and see what's happening inside there. This is what the jar looks like now. There's a cloudy greenish mass of growth at the side furthest from the light source. And there's an assortment of different blobs and patches on the inner surface of the glass all over. The cheap little USB microscope that I'm using for this tends to drop the frame rate in lower lighting conditions, so I've added a light to the setup. It's just a high CRI LED light bulb in a little can on a small tripod. So looking around, everything seems very still inside the jar. Lots of obviously living things, but none of them obviously motile. So let's look around at a few of the different things that have grown. There are these green globular structures. I'm not sure what they are. They appear to be colonies of green algae or maybe some sort of globular multicellular algae. They're probably too big to be the eggs of anything I've seen so far inside this jar. There is no sign at all of all those rotifers we saw in the early days, nor all the swarms of paramecium and other single-celled organisms. They might still be active in here, and perhaps have just moved away from the inner surface of the glass. Now there's a thriving algal mat inside the jar. Elsewhere, I thought I might have seen one or two small microbes moving slowly on the inner surface of the glass. but it could just be my imagination or pixel crawl on the low resolution microscope sensor. Here, I think we're looking at some short chains of cyanobacteria so we can see individual cells there. And I think some of these yellow patches might be an algae called Cyanura. This is about as close a view as I can get of them with this equipment. Suddenly, a flash of movement caught my eye. It's a copy pod, so after eight months, there are still active copy pods living inside this sealed jar. Evidence, I think, that at least for now, a balanced and self-sustaining system has developed inside the jar. Natural light is enabling the green algae to grow and provide oxygen, and they, together with probably some other organisms we can't see, are also providing food for the copy pods. And the wastes from the copy pods, together with their decomposing remains when they die, are providing nutrients for the algae and bacteria. Now, of course, this may not be able to continue forever, as in a small, closed system like this, once a species goes extinct, it's not coming back. But that hasn't happened yet, so I'm going to keep this going for longer. Looking around in the jar, I found a good number of adult copy pods in there, including one that appeared to be trailing a partial egg sac. So that's also a good sign that things have settled into a sustaining cycle. Up at the top of the jar, above the water level, there are now quite well-developed clumps of green algae, and amongst these, the copy pods can still be observed making their way up out of the main body of water. Still quite fascinating to think that this thin film of water inside the glass is a whole world to these tiny creatures. There was one minor mystery. As I was trying and failing to get a good shot of the sediment at the bottom of the jar, I noticed this thread of algae being tugged and moved by something. But I was unable to get a clear view of what was doing the moving. In all likelihood, it's just another copy pod because we have seen them get tangled up in these threads before but I suppose there's a very slim chance it might be something else we haven't yet seen. But I can't imagine there will be very much that's new and exciting to show you in this quietly balanced little jar from now on. However, I'm going to keep it going, and we'll look in on it again sometime. Maybe in another six months. So that's all for this update. I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.